Oh, I'm a beauty blogger, Mum. Hey, you cool cats and kinksters. Uh. <laughs> she killed her husband. Hello, my name is Liam, and I am a performer, artist, and gender experimenter who has been involved in the fetish scene for about three years now. When I first started looking at fetish, I wanted to get involved with the community without um, getting rid of my own style and my own identity. I was also poor as hell, so I started to make my own latex, and today I'm going to teach you how to do the same! Now, gear is a very large part of the fetish community, and for some people, looking their best is crucial to feeling their sexiest. And what better way to stand out in a dark room filled with sluts is to wear a homemade latex ball gown. Now, latex is a world within itself and I do not have the time in the world to go through all of it in one video. Um, so today I'm just going to teach you the very basics of sourcing, constructing and caring for your own latex so you can be the backdoor slut you have always dreamed of being. Now I like to think of latex as like a bratty, unruly child. You love it with all of your heart, but a lot of the time you just want to throw it out of the window. It's a very unpredictable material to work with and there are some rules that you do have to listen to when making it, otherwise it can break very easily. But don't let that put you off, it is a very rewarding material to work with and it is different to everything else. When it's right, it does look really cool. Firstly, you need to get your tools ready. First, you need latex. Sheet latex comes by the meter in various styles, colours and thickness. I recommend using 0.4mm or 0.5mm for regular clothing, and for heavier duty garments like strap work, thicker is a better bet. It comes from a variety of places, but in the UK, I would recommend Radical Rubber, Supertex or Yummy Gummy Latex if you want some more adventurous designs. Do your research, shop around! Now you can't sew latex, so what do you use? You use latex glue. For rubber construction, there are two types. Solvent-based, which is a thick, slimy type glue, or water-based, which is a thinner, milk-like glue. Both have the same effect, however you apply them in different ways, which I will explain later in the video. For solvent-based, I use Bostic 3851 latex adhesive, and for water-based, I use Radical Rubber Glue. Latex cleaner. Now, latex is a messy bitch, and she loves to pick up dirt, dust, and other erroneous fluids. So you need to prepare latex before glue can work properly. The standard is Bostic Latex Cleaner. If you're a bitch on a budget, some people use White Spirit instead, but this should be as an absolute last resort and doesn't work as well as Bostic Cleaner, so I would recommend investing. Alongside your latex glue and cleaner, you will need a cutting board, the larger the better, a gel pen, cloths that don't shed fibres, a credit card, rounded and sanded down at the edges, a small paintbrush, talcum powder, a roller, a long ruler, and jars for storage. You also need a rotary cutter, but I'm an idiot and I forgot to mention it. Now there are some other optional items that you can use. Um, you don't have to use these, but these are some things that I found really useful when I'm making latex. So if you do have access to them, I would definitely give them a go. A heat gun to help the glue and cleaner dry quicker. Masking tape to secure your latex when gluing. I ran out yesterday, so we're using sellotape. A stick of wood or plastic for joining up side seams. Homemade seam guides of half a centimetre, one centimetre and an inch to help create clean seams for gluing. I use some taped up chopsticks because I'm a budget queen. A pattern square, particularly useful for straight edges with a 0.5 centimetre index. Vivashine for after, silicon lube for putting the latex on. Get your mind out of the gutter. Now the first thing I'm going to briefly talk about is patterning. Before you start cutting latex, you need to make sure that you have the right shape of latex that you're cutting to make your clothes. This is an entirely different kettle of fish and some people spend years learning how to do patterning before they even make garments. Now there are lots of websites that you can use to help you with your patterning. It's not something even I'm very good at, but it's something to definitely bear in mind when you're learning how to make latex. The better you are at patterning, the easier you can make your clothes. Just do your research. Some websites will have specific latex patterns, some will just have some regular patterns that you can then take apart and change to make into a latex pattern. One thing to bear in mind though is that a regular pattern will be very different to a latex pattern in terms of sizes. And this is why. Latex, just like regular clothing, is built by putting different shapes together to make a garment. This is called block patterning. Different outfits will have different shapes, and making clothes is all about putting them together like a jigsaw. Latex has an intense stretch factor, so usually the patterns will be smaller to accommodate the stretch. 
Knowing your measurements and body shape and putting them into the pattern is a first step into making your own clothes. One good way of learning what your body shape is is by wrapping yourself in cling film and then covering yourself in duct tape. Then what you can do is you can draw along the pattern and cut it up and then you should have a shape that fits your body. I do recommend that you bring a friend in to do this because you don't want to be stuck in duct tape for the rest of your life. I've not been there whatsoever. Now today I'm going to be making a very basic vest based on a commission that I'm making for a friend. So here's what you do to begin. Firstly, you're going to need the person you are making the garment for. Oh, as if by magic! Just like any costume, you will need to take the person's measurements. For latex, it helps to take it just before the largest part. Once you have your measurements, a good rule of thumb is to take off 10% of any horizontal measurements, such as chest, biceps, waists and thighs. For instance, if someone has a 90cm chest, I will give it a measurement of 81cm to account for the stretch. The vertical measurement is usually fine, but you can always take off a few centimetres if there is a stretch on a vertical measurement. Once you have your measurements, you can then put them onto a pattern. If you're making your own pattern, you will need a tape measure, some patterning paper. The thicker the better as it's easier to trace, but I use brown parcel paper as a last resort. The patterning square with a half centimetre index, the long ruler, pens and pencils, a French curve for drawing the curves. I also recommend using a pattern curve if you have access to one. Some people like to take old latex garments that fit them really well and take them apart and then see what the shapes look like, but when you don't have a lot of money at your disposal, that's not the best option. Really, it is just a case of trial and error. If things don't look right, you can easily take it apart and cut things off. Really, it's just a game of experimenting. Use what works for you. There are books available and websites, and once you get the hang of it, you can start then focusing on the latex. Here is a large vest pattern that I am using for one of my commissions. It involves a front and a back panel, which are slightly different. It's also slightly thinner to account for the stretch. One thing to know is that there is a one centimetre crossover wherever you are going to be gluing the panels together. Therefore, I add a centimetre to each side I'll be creating a seam. Also on the ends of the seams that are joining, right angles are a useful guide to help create cleaner joins. Once you have your pattern, you can trace it onto your latex. Latex has two sides, one side matte and one side shiny. You can tell which is which based off how the light catches on the latex. Trace on the matte side of the latex using a gel pen as it's easier to clean. The matte side is a side that will be touching your skin when you wear the latex. Then use a rotary cutter to cut. If you have a straight edge, you can use a ruler to guide you. You want to cut away from you, using your weight to guide, following the line. Do it in one clean motion without stopping, keeping the latex taut with your other hand. If there are a tiny parts still connected after cutting, you can just rip them off, but latex can break very easily, so do this carefully. Make sure there are no little nicks or ridges on the latex, and simply follow around the lines until you have cut out your shape. Then, repeat for the other panel. Now we have cut out our panels, it's time to glue them together to make the vest. Before we make the garment itself, I'm going to teach you the basics of latex construction. Have your station ready with all your tools near you, and a large space to work. I will be using two scrap pieces of latex to demonstrate. The first thing you need to do is to clean your latex. Take your piece of cloth and cut off a small square, folding it over. When gluing panels together, one side should be shiny and one will be matte, so when they're put together, the shiny side will be on top. Don't do what I do and forget halfway through which is the shiny side. Then line up your panels. Take your folded cloth and dip it slightly into the cleaning fluid, not using too much as to not oversaturate the latex. You really don't need that much. When not using the cleaner, please make sure to put the lid on tightly as if it's left open, it will evaporate and you'll lose it. Then wipe a two centimeter section of the edge in one smooth motion and direction. Applying pressure as you do so until completely clean. Then wait a few minutes for it to dry. This is where a heat gun comes in handy to speed things up. Latex will bubble up when it comes into contact with the thinner and you want it to lie flat before you glue it. Don't use the heat gun too close to the table and make sure to keep it moving, just like a hairdryer. Next, it's time to apply the glue. Now there are two different types of glue, so I will teach you how to apply both. For water-based glue, first decant it into a jar. Just like the cleaner, secure it tightly when not in use and keep it out of direct sunlight. Then take the smoothed credit card and dip it into the glue, being careful not to use too much. 
at a diagonal angle towards you, 45 degrees to the table, swipe the glue onto the cleaned seam area of the latex, not missing any parts or leaving lines. Avoid being too heavy handed here. Then do the same to the other seam. Water-based glue goes tacky once applied, so it's crucial to glue seams cleanly and carefully as to not leave marks or chunky bits of glue on the latex that will show up when you stick it. See the difference? It's always best to do this in one go and add more glue to the card whenever needed instead of going over sections again. All seam surfaces must be glued for it to stick properly. Once applied, like the cleaner, you need to allow the glue to dry by either waiting a few minutes or by using your trusty heat gun. Now don't have the heat too high and don't hold it too close to the table or the glue will boil. When the glue goes clear, it's perfect. One important top tip when working is to always keep your station clean. Make sure after every time you glue, you clean any excess glue off your station every time, so nothing sticks to the latex when working. A clean station means clean latex, and everything sticks to latex. Glue is tacky, so when it's dry, you can easily pick it off. Keep things nice and tidy. Sometimes when working with straight seams, you can use tape to cover your seam lines, just like painting the edges of a wall. It gives it a nice clean glue application. Now this is useful for adding strips of latex trim to the edge of a garment, for example. Measure out a line half a centimetre larger than the seam. Simply stick the tape down and clean and glue like normal, but without stretching the latex or the tape too tight. When using solvent glue, like before, decant it into an empty jar. It's very thick, so mix in a little latex cleaner and mix with your brush to get the desired thickness. The thinner it is, the easier it is to apply, so don't use too much on the latex. Take your paintbrush and dip it into the glue and spread onto the latex like a paint, covering all of the seam. Solvent glue is stickier and less tacky than water-based glue, so you don't need as much, but you do use a thicker glue for thicker latex. Once applied, it works the same as water-based glue. Apply to the other panel and let it dry just as before. Once used, dip the paintbrush into white spirit and clean the excess glue off to stop it becoming hard and difficult to use. Time to put the panels together. Now this is probably the hardest part of making latex and there's a very specific technique to achieving the perfect fixture. Start by placing the latex on top of the panel, matching the sides and seams together. Hold it down slightly with your finger. With your other hand, hold the top sheet with your thumb and index finger, keeping it loose. And hold the bottom latex with your other three fingers, keeping the bottom nice and tight. Having the bottom held tight and the top loose is an odd sensation, and to me, it almost feels like a clockwise rotation type feeling. Keep the bottom tight and the top loose, as the top panel will naturally stretch compared to the bottom. Then, glide your finger across the seam to stick it down, guiding the top panel where it needs to stick. Don't have too much pressure when pressing down. You want to do this in one solid motion. If you've done it right, the two panels should lay flat and match with one another. Here it is again, but quicker. Now, the trick when gluing is to not overstretch the latex, otherwise you create unnecessary tension and it won't sit flat. Don't stop and start as it can create ridges and air bubbles and the seam will be weak and fall apart after a while. If things do go wrong, just simply unstick it and start again, but don't pull too hard or you may break the latex. If the panels lose their stickiness, simply re-clean, re-glue and start the process again. Once they're together, there should be a visible line of glue above both seams, so you know that the seam is fully glued. Next, apply pressure with your roller on both sides to make sure it's really stuck down. Don't be afraid to get in there and add some elbow grease. Add talcum powder to cover the glue and set the seams. If possible, you can use a fluffy brush to do this, but your finger works too. Add on both sides, then roller it again. This should set the seam and make sure the latex doesn't come apart. Once finished, slightly stress test the seam. If there are any gaps that don't stick down, the entire seam will break when it's stretched, so be attentive. I advise waiting a day before actually wearing a homemade garment just so it gives the glue some time to bond. 
Now a lot of the techniques I'm using in this video I learned whilst I was working at Regulation who are a fetish supplier in London who do some really amazing things about owning your fetish. Um, they're a bunch of wonderful people so if there's anything I've learned about making your own fetish gear it's about supporting smaller queer establishments. Um, so if any of you are looking for things like latex or any other fetish gear really do check out Regulation because they are kind of industry standard for me at this point. So whilst I was working at Regulation um, they, they this, Whilst I was working at Regulation, they described the technique of putting latex together as having piano fingers. It's because your fingers can do lots of different things and go in lots of different directions like you're playing a piano. Um, it's quite a tricky thing to get used to, so I would recommend really practicing the technique of putting latex together before making garments, as a lot of the time when I see people making their own garments for the first time, um, they haven't really mastered the technique of gluing and sticking, and it means that you get lots of ridges in the seams, and the best way to have a garment is to have it completely flat. So before making a garment really do practice this technique of putting latex down. Once finished, give your station a full wipe down and reset for use. Now you know the basics of putting latex together, it's time to make a garment. Let's take a look at this vest. Here are the vest panels that we cut from earlier. Now as it is a specific commission, I have added some decals and some trim to the panels. When you are further on with your latex skills and you start adding cool stuff, it's always best to do it before constructing so you can work with a flat surface. Always work with latex on a flat surface if you can. We are going to do the same thing we did with the scrap latex to put this together. Once you have your panels ready, we will repeat the cleaning and gluing process on the various seams. There are no rules of what side goes on top, but I prefer front side over back, right side over left. Latex is all about clean, structured and symmetrical lines. When creating a garment, there is sometimes a specific order in which seams you glue first, depending on the type of garment. It takes a bit of trial and error to work out. For a vest, I start at the shoulders as this creates neck and armholes to work with. However, for men's trousers, catsuits or singlets, I would start on the inside legs, working my way up to the chest, to the shoulders, and then finish with the outside seams. Clean each seam as before, making sure to clean the front panel on the inside and the back panel on the outside. When making clothes, it's important to clean and glue each seam one at a time. Clean everything early and it will become dirty and hard to work with. Then add your glue. I always recommend using water-based glue for longer seams. Whatever you're doing, working with latex will always come down to this same method of cleaning, gluing and applying. For a cleaner finish, having your seams all the same size is crucial. I recommend a one centimetre seam. For added help, use a chopstick seam guide to measure a 1cm strip on the bottom seam side of the latex, creating a small groove. This gives you a line to follow when sticking your panels together, keeping them neat. Do leave a little bit of an extra glue line above this though to ensure that the garment is fully stuck together. When putting your panels together, it's important that the sides match up. This shows that the latex hasn't been overstretched when gluing. To help this, I like to tape the edges down on the bottom piece of latex whilst applying, just so it doesn't move. Make sure to tape it down taut, not too loose, not too tight. Only tape down to stick down. I don't recommend taping the latex whilst cutting or applying glue. Then simply glue, apply and strengthen your latex, making sure the sides match and are even with one another. This is the process you will repeat for all of your garment. Once again, stretch test to make sure that there aren't any gaps or breaks in the seam. If you need to, give your station a quick clean. When making clothes, wherever there are holes for arms, the neck or on any exposed edge without a seam, it's important to add a folded hem to finish off the lines and give a garment a nice clean edge. You add a hem just before you complete the final seam that joins up and creates the hole. For instance, here in the neck, before we attach the shoulder to create a complete circle. To add a hem, simply clean the edges like you would with a regular seam. You do this on the inner matted side of the latex. Make sure to leave a gap at either side because you will clean and glue the ends once the seam is complete. Dry it and apply a thin layer of glue. Once dry, you take the edge of the latex with your left hand and curve over around half a centimetre. Using the roller, follow around the hem, folding the curve flat as neatly as possible with a roller to create the hem, following a nice even line. Don't add too much pressure here, as you may want to start again if things go wrong. And like normal, try and do it in one smooth motion, as to not create ridges or air bubbles due to uneven pressure. 
Once again, this takes a bit of practice to get perfect, especially if you're working with curved edges. You can always undo the seam or re-glue and apply if it's not quite right. But if you're happy with the hem, go over it a few times with the roller, applying pressure to stick it down, and then set it with the talcum powder. Give it one more go with the roller to properly cement the glue in the seam. Now it's time to complete the other shoulder seam, repeating the process you did with the first shoulder. Clean, glue, apply, and strengthen. Once the seam is down, you can go back and complete the unfinished hem. The hem may have stuck itself down whilst you worked on the seam, so make sure to pull it off gently. Clean beneath the fold and around the area. Use the heat gun to dry, then use solvent glue and your brush to glue the fold. Dry it again. Then make the latex tight and roll down on the hem and finish it off. Strengthen with your roller and apply the talc. Look, now you've got a finished hem. Now that both shoulders are attached, you can make a start on the hems where both the armholes will be, as they only have one seam left before they are completed. Do both these holes as before, leaving gaps at the ends, applying your roller carefully and neatly across the folded hem, then strengthen. Instead of hems, you would also add sleeves at this point if you wanted to make a t-shirt. Now you've finished the bulk of the arm seams, it's time to attach the sides of the vest together. When you're working with larger seams, or final seams that create sleeves or legs, use a long piece of plastic or wood to rest the bottom paddle onto. This not only gives you a surface to glue and clean on, but it also gives a more precise method of attaching the sides together. Clean and glue as before, picking off any excess bits of glue that could cause lumps in the seam. Make sure to use tape to secure the bottom panel onto the wooden slat. Carve out a 1cm seam guide just as before. Then, line up the panels and using the application technique, attach the two panels together, once again making sure that the bottom panel is nice and tight and the top is loose, but neither one are overstretched. Follow the seam guide carefully for the cleanest seam. Longer seams always take a little bit of practice, especially if the seam is naturally curved like this one, but latex is all about being patient and attentive. Finger dexterity is key. Then strengthen and set the seam on both sides of the latex with your roller and talcum powder. Give it a quick test to check that it's secure. When you've finished one side seam, you can go back and complete the hem on the arm. You should have a long unfinished side at the bottom of the garment. We're going to add a hem at the bottom, but this one will be slightly bigger at around 1.5 centimeters. If it's a straight edge, you can use a ruler or pattern square instead of a seam guide. Always aim for the cleanest finish possible. Then glue and apply the hem, setting it and securing it after. As it is straight and wide, it should be easier. Unlike most of the sex I have with heterosexual men. Ugh. Now you glue the final seam together, just as you have learnt with the previous techniques in the video. Once the final seam is connected, you can finish up the arm hem and the final larger hem at the bottom. And she is finished! Give everything a quick once over, give some marks a little clean, and just make sure that everything is solid and together. And that is the completed vest. Once it's all glued together, you will have your finished garment. Um, one thing when you finish the garment is really make sure that it's stuck together. There's one thing you don't want when wearing latex, and that is for it to just break apart at the seams. This is a material that you wear under a lot of tension, so if there's any little gap that you've missed when gluing, or if there's a little cut in the latex, then it will just rip apart. Latex has a, an expiration date, in my opinion. Um, as soon as you make it and the more you wear it, the, it is at some point 
going to break if you don't look after it properly and if you don't make sure that it's completely sealed properly. So really do make sure that when you're making your latex, you are taking the utmost care. Otherwise, <laughs> once you have your latex, it's time to clean it and it's time to store it. Now, as I've said before, latex is an absolute bitch of a material to work with. It loves to have a tantrum. So you need to make sure that you do things properly when working with it. When storing your latex, make sure to keep it on a plastic hanger, as metal or fibre hangers can damage and dirty the latex. Store in a dark place away from sunlight in its own section. Now don't let latex touch other materials. Keep your blacks and your colours separate. It's better to be safe than sorry. Now latex is a natural material, so there are some things that will eat away at it, and I would say to avoid them at all costs. One big factor is oil. Anything that has oils in will make will stain it and eat away at it. The same with using um, metal hangers, such as copper and brass, or if you are working with fixtures like studs and rivets, make sure that they are either treated or they are plastic. Otherwise, it will just eat away at the latex, it will rot, and the outfit will break. If not stored correctly, latex really does have a habit of marking or kind of getting these textures on them or staining. So the more that you look after your latex, the less likely that you'll get these weird stains after a while. Um, now, as it is a natural material, it is, um, it's natural for it to get some sort of marking, but keeping it clean regularly will minimise that. Now, if you've worn your latex after a while or you've worn your latex at an event or maybe you've done something slightly naughty in your latex, then please do make sure to wash it after every use or at least after every couple of uses. Um, lube, sweat, other erroneous bodily fluids will also eat away at the latex. So here's how you clean and look after your latex. Fill a sink or bathtub up with warm water, enough to submerge your latex. Add plain, unscented washing up liquid and mix together. Then add your garment. Give some of the marks a little wash with your hand and leave to soak for no more than 15 to 20 minutes, making sure it's fully underwater. Then give it a quick shake and hang to dry or simply pat dry with a towel. So there are two things you can do when storing latex. You can one, cover it in talcum powder. That will mean that it doesn't stick together, but it will mean you'll have to wash it again before you put it on. Another thing that people tend to use is Vivashine. You can get Vivashine from most latex retailers. It's this sort of like bluey type liquid. Uh, basically you just put a little cup of that in some warm water. You dip the latex into the water and it'll come out and it kind of creates this protective layer to go over your latex and it stops it from sticking. I would recommend having Vivashine, very important. For any person that wants to wear latex, they'll definitely need some Vivashine in their wardrobe. They will need some Shiner, so you can get that from most retailers. I think Vivashine have their own version of that. And I would also recommend having some silicone lube. Putting on latex is a bitch because it does stick to the skin. If you are putting latex on, just make sure that you put talcum powder or lube over your body and the insides of the garment and take care when putting it on. It does have a stretch factor, but if you overstretch it, it will just rip after a while. So do make sure that you're lubricating your body and the rubber before putting it on. And trust me, lubricating is part of the fun. And that's that, that is how you make latex. Um, as I've said before, latex is a really difficult material to work with. It takes people years to get to grips with it. So start off small. You're not gonna make a 17 panel cat suit of your dreams in just a week. Um, so do your research, start off small and just enjoy the process. Latex can be quite a tricky skill to learn and I hope that some of the skills in this tutorial help you. But like me, I'm a very visual learner and I like to have someone next to you doing it. I would so recommend doing a short course on learning the basics of latex. If you do a quick Google, you're sure to find something. Um, if you're London based, I know I have some friends who work over at Fetish Daddy. I will link them just in a second. Um, they make some really cool fetish gear out of latex and leather. They use horse bits. They just use really cool implements and their fetish gear is very much based on the individual. They do some really cool stuff. So recommend I recommend checking those people out. Um, they also do have their own latex cores if you want to make like a singlet or something. Again, I'll link you in the bio. A course to make latex is a really good way of starting and getting you excited into making latex stuff. And there's the basics of making latex. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, please do find me on my social media profiles. If you want to get in touch, if to ask more questions, if you have any more advice that you need, if you want any commissions, or if you really just want to discuss my fetish life in general, please do message me and I can give you some more details. Anyway, I hope you're all staying safe in quarantine. Hope you're all staying kinky and having fun. Um, I'm going to have a gin and tonic now, because I deserve it. See you guys.